Yeah, straight A student, but I'm friends with the cool kids. Following the rules and the rubric. Freestyle on the bus and it's too lit. Everybody like, hold down, who's this? Who's this? Raising the stakes. For Thomas, chugging along that fast track to success means long hours spent on this London soundstage. Here, a miniature set has been built to accommodate planes, trains, and automobiles. And director David Mitten gave us a look at how he helps Thomas and company steam up the small screen. They all have different expressions for whatever they're handling at the time. And so the servos inside there control his eyes, as you can see. So if he's a, he can go do a silly little thing. Left and right, and of course, up and down, and action. Using this lens, which my cameraman and I designed up together, it can track with the engine, along the engine tracks as well, alongside it, with it, fly over it, fly over bridges and track with it. It can do anything. Well, bust my boiler, said Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas's creator, Britt Allcroft, says for kids, the appeal of this engine isn't mechanical, it's magical. They relate to what happens with, uh, with all the characters, and they love trains. I think everybody all over the world, whatever their age, responds to the sound of a train whistle. The idea of drawing the engines was rejected. Instead, they decided to use models. So Thomas got his very own studio. The series is filmed on a huge train set, forever changing to accommodate each story. The detail is extraordinary. With the enthusiasm of those one suspects would be playing trains anyway, Mitten and his team have built a fantasy world beloved by children everywhere. Everything comes in two sizes. Close-up shots on the footplate, for example, are filmed on large-scale models, though these don't move. Each miniature engine, and there are now 17 of them, has several dozen faces to capture the mood of the moment. But it's the eyes, animated by radio control, which give each engine a personality of its own. It's this characterization which has made Thomas and his friends so popular. There's little nuances to every engine. Each one performs differently, has different functions. So they're all lovable in their own way. They're like dogs, really. I mean, they're all little, little things. Once you get hold of them and uh, you don't really insult them, that's the thing, they hate being insulted. And they won't work, you know, if you insult them. Have any of the engines given you particular problems? Well, I get a bit of lip from one or two of them, you know. Um, Gordon's a little bit reluctant to turn out in the morning. He's a good engine in the afternoon. Whereas uh, Percy and Thomas love the morning. Yeah, they're very good in the morning. When it comes to being an actor, like such as for filming a series or movie, there's many places all around the world where some locations could be taken in real life events. Some could be even made from green screen or custom made. But you would have to spend long hours becoming a character and it's like when you're a character inside of a film, it almost seems like you're actually in that location. But instead of walking into a set, you're walking into a different dimension. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to be talking about that. Today, we're going to be talking about the history of Marklin and how did the world of Thomas the Tank Engine came to life. That includes the making of Thomas and all of his steamy friends. So hopefully you guys will enjoy today's video. Before we start, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, and do not forget to hit my notifications on so you guys won't miss every single update on these videos that I upload. So without further ado, let's get started. Morklin, or Merklin in capital letters, is a German toy company. The company was founded in 1859 and is based at Guppingen in Baden-Württemberg. Although it originally specialized in dollhouse accessories, today it is best known for model railways and technical toys. In some parts of Germany and in Sweden, the company's name is almost synonymous with model railways. Okay, thank you woman that I've never heard before. So anyways. Who the fuck you calling weird? I'm a device and more intelligent. Oh no, I know that. I just didn't ask. <laughs> Yeah, so now since we got that out of the way, let's just keep continuing with today's video. So yeah, Marklin is one of the most popular companies to sell model trains, such as Gauge 1, HO Scale, Z Scale, and N Scale. So even though the company has been around for 164 years ago, they still sell one of the best models in the market for great deals and prices. Now we're going to talk about the fun part, the making of Thomas. 
So, if you remember earlier, the narrator said, before David Mitten was entering the studio, said that the series of Thomas was going to be dried animation, but that had to be rejected immediately. So that's where Thomas has his very own show. So little by little, we are going to talk about how Thomas was made and what materials did they use in order for the little blue engine and his friends come to life. First of all, you need to look at the base of the locomotive in order for you to know what type of character this personality could be inside of the series. There's so many things that we need to discuss. For example, the locomotive and the chassis. The BR-55 was used in sort of parts for Thomas, Edward, James, Percy, Toby, Doug, Donald, and Douglas. So a lot of these BR-55s had to be used for different characters, like I said earlier, and then some of them would have to use for parts such as scrap, for example. Up next, we have the BR-80, which it was used for parts for Percy, Toby, Bill, Ben, the city of Truru, Diesel, Daisy, Boko, and Mavis. For these bad boys, you could find them anywhere, even on eBay, but they're very expensive. And last, we have the BR-78, which was used for Edward, Henry, Gordon, Percy, and Oliver. Like I said before, these bad boys are very hard to find, very expensive, but hey, it is what it is. There are so many ways to make Gage 1 replicas just like in the show. One of them is 3D printed, the other would be plastic card, laser cutting, and brass. So after you've done all of those steps, now we could assemble the model. Now for a steam engine to look real, it needs to have some features just like a real steam engine does. For example, a smoke unit. So that little unit builds from the smokestack so it could look like that the engine is actually blowing steam. At the time, the models didn't perform very well so they used DCC decoders so it could run smoothly. Now we're gonna talk about the I mechanism. The servos that they use is RC control, so you could tell which is which that you're controlling for the eyes to move. The servos that they use is up and down, left and right. So that means the engines, each one of them would have to have two servos, one that goes up and down and the other left and right. Sometimes the servos won't even work if you don't treat them good. Every engine has face plates for the mechanism and put the face where it needs to go. Sometimes if it's very tightened, they won't work. That's why it's always good to make tests before you start filming because if not, but they won't turn out perfect like how it is. After the progress of building and testing is done, they go ahead and paint it in primer, but the paint that they usually use is from Tamiya. There are some colors that are lighter, some of them are just darker. Just looking at these pictures, they choose the right color. Now we're going to talk about the faces. So usually when a character has an expressions, you need to design like how are their expressions going to be. So that way, you could go ahead and start making them. All the faces are made out of clay. Not everything is always perfect, but with a bit of practice and corrections that you thought it was wrong, you get perfect perfections. Now for those that remembered, in some of the episodes between season 8 to season 12, the eye mechanisms were no longer used in the show. They started using tracking faceplates, and this is where we started to know that this is from CGI. Including the narrow gauge engines, which they also had their mechanism removed, but the fans were also desperate to see like how bad it was, and not gonna lie, it is kinda bad. Each set in every different episode has a budget cost of more than 15,000 pounds. In US nation, that's actually more than $18,000. When the model series was no longer introduced in the show, they actually made a budget of $1 billion. But hey, at the end of the day, even though that the model series is no longer present with us, we could still watch them on DVDs and YouTube videos. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached to our conclusion of our new video. And I want to apologize. I'm sorry that this video took a little longer than I expected. It's because my family are too loud. So, like, every time I try to record videos, I can't do them because of the noise in the background. And honestly, that can never do. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, and do not forget to hit my notification sound so you guys won't miss every single updates on these videos that I upload. Be patient with me, guys. There's more videos on the Way, but for now, just be a little patient. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and as always, I will see you all my creation family in the next video. Bye guys, take care, and God bless you.